is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com.
Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hockey Nutrition with Kim. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD, and if you have struggled with trying to figure out what to give your skater just before ice time so that they feel energized, this session is going to be for you. Now, something that you want to remember is a pre-skate snack in the 15-minute window is just a top off their tank snack. It's not a meal. It should not be heavy at all. Something very easy for your skater's body to digest. So if your skater has had a meal two to three hours just before ice time, they're probably going to need a little snack before they get on the ice. And in this time frame, this 15 minute window, aim for only carbohydrate rich foods. And these snacks contain 15 grams of carbohydrates and 60 calories. Some examples are seven to eight mini rice cakes, one tablespoon of raisins, a half a cup of applesauce or a go-go squeeze tube. So you could use a snack cup or a go-go squeeze tube, whichever is more convenient for your skater. A fruit leather strip. Uh, I encourage you to buy the organic ones that do not have any artificial dyes in them seven to eight animal cookies. Now notice these are animal cookies without the frosting. And one fourth of a large bagel. You can see you could easily divide it into four. So what you could actually do with all these snacks is you could help your team prepare for those quick turnaround games so that you always have hockey strong snacks for your skater and the team as well. Now you can create your skater's pre-skate snack bag and you'll always be prepared. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And to learn more about youth ice hockey nutrition, visit www.hockeymomrd.com. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. Happy skating till next time. Welcome to the band gym, everyone. I want to talk to you today about assisted band training because I think it's a big area that people don't understand when it comes to resistance band training. And you know what? If all you're doing is assisting pull-ups, you're missing a huge opportunity to train your body to look, feel, and move its best. So with that, let's jump right in to this three-part series on utilizing assisted band training. Obviously, pull-ups are the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about assisting gravity. You know, pull-ups are one of those tough exercises that we all want to be able to do, but as Father Time comes into play, it becomes more and more challenging to do assist or do pull-ups. So the bands work really good at assisting pull-ups because they decrease our body weight. But let me take you through a few other options and ways that you can go ahead and assist gravity. Now what you have to remember is gravity is primarily a vertically displaced force. So if we're gonna assist a movement and if we're gonna assist gravity, we're probably gonna go ahead and attach a band into more of a vertical position. But it doesn't have to be exactly vertical. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got a red band attached up onto the highest part of my bar. I'm gonna go ahead and assist with pull up or push ups. Again, another body weight exercise that a lot of us struggle with. So, when I go into a push up, as long as the majority of my assistance is in a vertical position, that works out fine. So, it doesn't have to be straight vertical. So, we're in this position now and we're assisting push ups. Now, do you assist it at your waist or do you assist it at your shoulders? Well, that's up for debate. You can assist it wherever the most or the weakest point of the movement is. For most people, when it comes to push-ups, it's their trunk that's failing them. So I like to recommend that you assist at your waist to assist your core so you can keep your core nice and stable 
so that your shoulders can do their work. The other thing to keep in mind is that if our trunk is maintaining good stability during our assisted push-up, the likelihood is our shoulders are going to work much more effectively. So again, why do I want to assist gravity? Well, one of the reasons is because obviously you can't do the movement and you want to learn how to do the movement, so you got to decrease your body weight. But the second reason you want to do assisted movements is to get better muscle recruitment because now you go ahead and you allow your stabilization muscles like your shoulders and your trunk to come into play so that you can utilize them because they're not overloaded right from the get-go. I like to do assisted push-ups a lot because it really allows me to go ahead and train the right muscles the right way. But it also allows me to go ahead and do variations of push-ups. So I can do one-arm push-ups, I can do jumping push-ups, I can do a lot of other variations of push-ups. So keep that in mind, that assisted band training isn't just for people that can't do the movement. It could be so that you can do more advanced movements as well. Let me take you through another setup here. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab my black band and I'm going to hook it onto a carabiner that I have attached above or into the, into the ceiling. Now the carabiner is attached into an eye bolt that then is screwed down into a stud. So it's very secure. So if you're going to use this setup, make sure that that is solidly established into a stud. So you have no problems. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to assist lower body movements. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can assist a lower body movement. Let's go with squats first. I can go ahead and put the band underneath my hips. So now I've got my center, or my center gravity supported so I can go ahead and do assisted squats. So I've got my hands free so I can go ahead and do a nice reach. If I wanted to put a chair underneath me so I had a secure chair underneath, I could do that. I could also go ahead and position myself here and I could do an assisted split squat or an assisted reverse lunge. Just keeping the band underneath my hips so that it allows me to go ahead and vertically assist myself. So any type of assisted movement like this where your foot is stationary or your feet are stationary and the band is assisting you in a vertical position is going to be a great way to go ahead and assist with lower body strengthening exercises. But now you don't have to just go ahead and assist at your hip. You could go ahead and assist by putting the band simply against your trunk. And now what you're going to do is you're going to assist in a higher position. So now the assistance is coming from more up in my upper body. It's simply going to go ahead and help me go ahead and perform the movement, but I'm not directly or proximately supporting my hips with the assistance. I've got it a little further away from where the movement's occurring from, but it's still allowing me to go ahead and do my assisted split squats, assisted reverse lunges. You could even go ahead and attach in here and you could do any kind of lateral movement where you're going ahead and proving your assistance with like lateral squats or lateral reaches, those types of things. The key thing to keep in mind is if you're going to assist gravity, you're probably going to need some, you are going to need some type of vertical force to go ahead and assist with gravity. Because you know what? Gravity is a vertically driven force. So there you go. That's how you're going to go ahead and assist with gravity. In part two, I'll take you through how to go ahead and assist with momentum. My name is Shawnee Harley, 
and my business is Winning Matters. I'm a two-time Olympian and mental toughness coach, and I do a lot of listening to athletes, parents, coaches. Here's what athletes tell me all the time. I hate making mistakes. Join the club. Mistakes are part of sport. Even the best athletes, no matter what the sport, they make mistakes all the time. So here's what I coach. Instead of getting all whoopie doo drama, feeling sorry for yourself, getting your knickers in a knot when you make a mistake, accept the fact mistakes are going to happen. But here's what you get to choose. What kind of mistakes are you going to make? Try this. Get your athletes to make brave mistakes. Yeah, brave mistakes. They're gonna make them. It's not if they're gonna make them, it's when. How about choosing courage? How about making mistakes that are brave? I took a risk, I tried something new. Do you know how much different it feels when you make a brave mistake than a timid, scared, unrisky, safe? Those kind of mistakes feel awful. Not only that, a lot of the athletes that I work with, they're trying to get a scholarship. So guess what that means? There's coaches in the stands, there's recruiters in the stands, there's scouts in the stands. And this is what I tell them. Don't you think these experts know the difference between a brave mistake and a timid mistake? And who are they gonna choose? Athletes that are courageous, bravely putting themselves out there, or the ones that are timid and playing it safe? What wins championships? Playing it safe or going for it? So next time your athletes are out there making mistakes, which they will be, tell them mental toughness is about choosing to make brave mistakes. Go for it. If you want to play at the next level, brave mistakes will help you get there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you all very much. Hey, Patrick, have you ever heard of box hockey? Box hockey? Why? Yes, of course. Its origin is unknown, but we know it has been played since way back in the 19th century. That's right, and it's been played recreationally, and clubs way back when also held huge tournaments. Well, friends, would you like to see a sample? Oh, yes, yes. The first thing you might notice is that kids can have a ton of fun. You might also notice that it's a real workout as the kids battle non-stop for that puck. I wonder if minds are racing right now with viewers thinking about an entire team competing. Or maybe using the game at get-togethers like birthday parties and cookouts. Or even holding tournaments maybe even as fundraisers. Ah, but did you know that? Coach Chick has another great idea when it comes to playing that game. Yup. Parents are always asking him how they can get their kids to be more aggressive, and he's seen box hockey work in his summer hockey schools. Yes, the kids really do battle, and they don't want to lose. Just take a look at what he means. Man. Those kids don't want to lose. Well, you can imagine how excited Coach Chick was when he discovered he could become affiliated with a company that produces the beautiful model shown in that video. And we suspect you will be interested in knowing how you can get your very own. Just click on the link right below and it will take you right to the company website. Yes, 
Click that link, right down there, to get your very own. Well, we are out of here. Actually, I am going to play box hockey, right now. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.